ESPN for coverage of the stretch run as we bring you October 25th, the Sacramento Mile, the last turned in the second fastest time in qualifying. Those two riders were head and shoulders above the rest of the heat race winners. They were in the 24s. The rest of the guys were all the way up 26 is 27. Rich King, rider number 80, makes his way to the line. Just a couple of years ago, this guy finished second in the Grand National Championship point standings. Mike Hacker, one of the young lions. Dan Butler, rider number 22, another good young racer. Rider number 43, Joe Kopp, that's Kenny Tolbert. Remember him from uh, Chris Carr days. He used to tune Chris Carr's dirt tracker. Joe Kopp uh, from Micah, Washington. Down down the line, the rest of the qualifiers that uh, will be running this, the opening round of the Grand National Championship dirt track season. And uh, what a season it promises to be. Scott, he's not going to do much damage here tonight as we check out the starting lineup. Row number one on the end, it's going to be Hacker, Butler, and Cobb. Of course, we saw that Landis had the pole. Here's row number two, Tim Burton's good to have him back. Rider number nine, Jay Springsteen, three national championships, 41 career victories. Steve Moorhead, Will Davis, we have got them here at Daytona, and the light goes green. So he'll come out with a hole shot here, so ever important here at Municipal Stadium. And it is going to be Terry Poovey, the veteran from Eulis, Texas. Second fastest qualifier tonight. The crowd loves that. There's Will Davis back in the pack just away. Springsteen, you saw him shoot around the outside. There goes Moorhead to the outside. They're looking for room on a cushion. This is back in the pack. And oh, Davis goes down hard. That is the definition of face plant. Look at that. He went down extremely hard over the front of that motorcycle. Just was smashed to the ground. Boy, he had enough, oh look, you know, he had enough sense to roll off to the side. He's acknowledging someone there. Yeah, I'm okay, but boy, he is not getting up all that quickly. Here it is again, Steve. Watch. I think Will Davis is uh, trying to take an opportunity here that really doesn't exist. He's on the inside line there. He's only got one rider to really protect from getting around on the inside. Iwanaga is part of the funnel effect of everybody waiting to pull the trigger to get a drive out. He comes across the front of Will. Will's got no place to go except on his face. And I think as he lands there, he gets the wind knocked out of him, and uh, he's gasping for air. That's why he didn't get up so quick. Riding on the aggressive side, Dave Sadowski, you know something <laughs> about that. You don't win by not being aggressive, and sometimes it'll bite you. But, Will, I don't think there's any tougher than, than this guy here. I know one that's equally as tough. While this was going on on one end of the racetrack, watch Steve Moorhead on the other end of the racetrack. Moorhead buries old number 42 into the hay bales. Man, look at this. He comes out all covered with uh, hay bale and a little bit of mud to go along with it. They're going to straighten his motorcycle out, and assuming they do, he, along with Will Davis, will get back into this main event. They give them like 10 minutes if they have a problem and there is a red flag before the restart of the next race. Welcome back to Daytona Beach, where the debris has been cleaned up. The machines are back on the track, and you know what? So are Will Davis and Steve Morgan. They're way back, way back. They invented a new role for them. If you cause a red flag and cause a restart, see there to the left? There they are back there. They're on row four. Well, that's where you have to go if you are the cause of the race to be stopped by a red flag. So they have their work cut out for them to gain points here. Once again, it is Terry Poovey out front. Veteran from Euless, Texas, two times in a row managed to steal the whole shot. And there you see the two guys going to work, Moorhead and Davis. And now they're not pussyfooting around at all. Davis goes way up high. He's not been there all night long, but obviously. Oh, and look at that. Oh, that is Nickens. so dangerous. Nickens coming to a stop. His engine blew or something, held up his hands immediately. Moorhead had to take evasive action, and that cost him even further in the standings here on the racetrack. That is a dangerous situation. Unfortunate for Nickens. I thought he'd uh, work his way through. He has such great technique. Here goes Will Davis out on the cushion. Again, Look, at Davis. His Look at Davis carving through that traffic. Unreal, Larry. This guy's just bent. On, uh, sometimes when you hit the ground, it'll motivate you. Throw caution to the wind. You say, hey, man, you almost feel immortal after you hit the ground and get up without injury. Yeah, when Nickens threw up his hand, I want to point out quickly as we watch Jay Springsteen, rider number nine, that I did not mean to imply that Nickens did anything wrong. He did everything right. It's just such a tough situation it when is. there's someone behind it. It is. It's a dangerous situation. Poovey's going to be tough to catch here. He's got this line figured out. You see him modulating the throttle, which is so important here. 
He never really drops the hammer on it. It's just like turning up the stereo. He does it so smooth. It's all traction. It is Terry Poovey running in the lead. It is Rich King running second and Brett Landis holding down the number three position. Landis was the fast qualifier tonight and is a former Daytona short track winner. But Terry Poovey you are right. He has this thing dialed but I wouldn't count out the two guys behind him at this point. They are equally as smooth and equally at home on this racetrack. And Will Davis, he's everyone's hero right now. All night long, Will Davis has been down on the groove, but the groove is cluttered. And if he wants to make any kind of points here at all, he has got to make some passes. And to do that, he's got to get up into high stuff. And that's what he is doing. Putting on a great show, but you know what? He's going absolutely nowhere. Yeah, that's just a, a good contrast of approach uh, here at the Daytona racetrack. Terry Poovey, you don't see the bike snapping out sideways until right before he gets on the big drive. The bike's not all crossed up, and that's really goes against the grain of uh, traditional dirt track racing. You have to really temper your throttle hand at this racetrack to make the bike accelerate, bite the ground, and go forward. It's what they call racing on a groove track. You see that narrow black band around the inside and around the straightaways? Well, that is rubber that has been laid down from the previous practice sessions, heat races and semis, and that's where the traction is. You burn that rubber off the tires, you get it down on the track, and you get great traction. Just outside of that, you know what you end up with? Absolutely nothing. Just nothing to propel you forward. Here's Rich King. He's on the same exact line. Matter of fact, these guys are turning uh, almost exactly the same uh, lap times, but Poovey, with his excellent start, has got the advantage here. Now, Poovey has started to open a gap between himself and King. Look at that. And King has opened a gap between himself and Brett Landis. Now, there's the one that I can't figure. I would have thought that Landis would have been all over King. Landis was the fastest by far all night long. And now, King with a problem. King has a problem with this race look to be uh, major points for him King is off the racetrack yeah look at this oh and a rider down Tim Mertens rider number 36 goes down but King was the major surprise Brett Landis moved into second place while Tim Mertens want to move off the racetrack there Tim you're in the way well he knows if he can force the red flag out he can get back in this one but it's not going to happen and we'll be back Welcome back to Daytona Beach where Terry Poovey is blitzing the field. The only competition he really had was Rich King and late in the race Rich King unfortunately it, it looks from up here ski like well the way that rear end was wobbling around that maybe he got a flat tire in any event King is still out there but nowhere in sight. Terry Poovey is on his way to his 10th Grand National Championship victory. And I got to tell you, it has been 12 years since that guy has stood atop a victory podium. It's amazing that uh, after 12 years, he can win a race with such ease. But, uh, I mean, Rich King going out definitely handed him uh, an easier day here at Daytona. Well, Terry Poovey has always been at home on the short track machines, although uh, the victories that he has acquired in his career. Uh, are a mixture of half miles, miles, and uh, short tracks. As a matter of fact, he's won five half miles and uh, two short tracks and two miles leading into this event. So, uh, I mean, the guy is at home on any kind of a dirt tracker, but it's just been the number of years that has gone by. Look at there, he's waving at people. <laughs> he's having he some can fun. feel it, can he? Can yeah. he feel it? You know what that feels like, don't you? Yeah, winning that Daytona is a big deal. He's having a lot of fun. Great stand up wheelie. He'll take the checkered flag, and 12 years after he won a national, he comes back and wins another one. You know what? As we look at the rest of the finishers, Landis Springsteen, I'll get to that in a second. Springsteen on, look at there, on the podium. Wow, two veterans. Fantastic. I'll tell you, I'm looking for uh, Rich King. There he is. He dropped all the way back to 11. This guy figured to be a contender this season, and he didn't start out that well. Now, not all of the veterans did that well. Will Davis down at the bottom of the track, and you saw Steve Moorhead up on top there. Those two definitely had their problems. Watch this Will Davis crash one more time. Larry, I am positive that's not the way Will Davis had planned his evening. But he did hit the ground hard, got back up, and it inspired him to ride real hard. Uh, what kind of interviews that you like to do, I know, Will, but first tell me about the uh, little get off there in the first lap. Well, it's kind of ugly. You know, I'm getting tired of doing these face plants. My old head can't take me anymore, these deals. But uh, 
I was okay. That's short track racing. That's why I love it so much. You know, that's just what you do. You know, if you get a front row start, uh, you know, that that's all about, you know, you get a whole shot, you can win these things. You start on the third row, you can expect what happened. You're going to get in traffic and you got to hold the gas on to try to get through it. And sometimes you ain't going to make it, you're going to crash. And that's what happened. Well, no one ever accused Steve Moorhead of not being smart. How about this guy, Terry Pooby? To go so many years, everybody wondered, hey, where's all the talent? Pooby showed he's still got a reserve account. Well, he does. 12 years is as long as anyone has ever gone, as a matter of fact, longer than anyone has ever gone between national wins. The uh, dry spell was broken by Jay Springsteen after 10 years, and he held the record. And now Poovy coming back to uh, to garner that thing. He has got to be, and, and and I am too, you know what? Just the happiest guy here, because I'm very happy for him. Anytime you can pull off a big victory after a dry spell, it just kind of inspires you and the guys that help you out. Uh, I'd look forward to seeing Terry Pooby win some more this year with his crew getting pumped up after this big Daytona win. Well, I'm kind of a sentimentalist, and when you see the old-timers come back and put it on top of the podium, it just makes me feel real good. Hey, we'll be back with more from Daytona Beach. The dirt track season opener has been brought to you by Honda. Between now and July 31st, you can get a great deal on a great bike during the Honda ride-off. Honda, walk in, ride off. By Kawasaki Motorcycles. Call 1-800-661-RIDE for a dealer near you. And by Cycle World, the world's largest, world's best motorcycle magazine. Now, welcome back to Municipal Stadium. Standing by in the infield with a microphone in front of him is the old veteran, Jay Springsteen, who finished third tonight. I tried the high line for a few laps, you know, and, and I got around a few guys, but I had to just fall back in line. I figured that... The cushion's kind of going away, so I just kind of had to fall in line, and I knew that the butler was right on my tail there, and I just kept getting better and better because I kept getting better lines. I kept finding better things out there, getting better traction, but hey, I was just happy to be on the box here at Daytona. I mean, Daytona is like a crapshoot anyhow. And if you're not first or second, you usually stuff's in the truck. <laughs> Springer's the man. Brett Landis won Daytona Short Track in 1995. He came here tonight with great expectations, but ended up second. Yeah, I did. I, I mean, I have nothing to be ashamed about, but I wanted to win this race bad. You know, I've been dreaming about it all, all winter. But, you know, we come down here and run second both nights to Terry. You, you can't ask for much more than that. They did a good job, but it was all this guy tonight, Ski. Hey, when a veteran's on his game, he's hard to beat, and that's what Terry Poovey was. He had this track wired. 1985 was the last time you won a national. 1976, no, that's not 76. Yeah, it was, was your first national win, a short track at Talladega. That's it, 20 years. 20 <laughs> years, exactly. Not too shabby for a 39-year-old guy. Did you think number 10 would never come? Boy, I began to wonder. Marco Mann told me, I was talking to him, I, I saw Joanne, I was walking up the stairs, and I asked her where Bart was, and she said he's up there. And Marco Mann said, I want you to win win Friday and Saturday and Markle I did it. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts right now Jerry? Man I'm just so happy. I want to thank uh, Jim France for uh, putting this race on and letting me come down here and I want to thank all the fans for coming. I want to thank uh, all my sponsor Carl Klimith, Glenn Salpaca, Ted Cicada, uh, McCooney Saddleman, Hap Jones, Walt from Hap Jones, uh, Last year when everything burned up, he sent me some money for I could get going. And the money that uh, he sent me, I bought that frame with to build this motorcycle. I bought everything and built this motorcycle this winter. I didn't have anything, and uh, this is the first two times I run it, and it's a good one. I guess so, and it occurs to me that you almost didn't even come to Daytona. Well, uh, I didn't have any sponsors. Uh, you know, I, I can't race without any help, and I still don't. I, I still don't have a deal, and uh, <laughs> that's not good when you're leading the points. Here are the point standings after the opening round. Terry.